Hey Luke, uh, just watched your video. It's actually the first video uh, I've ever seen you do before, but I really, I really liked it, and um, it seems like you're trying to work out a lot of the same problems that I'm thinking about, as far as um, like I, I, I feel like I want to get involved in politics, but but I, I hate the way the political arena and and, and the politicians really interact with each other, and and when people become political, they become politicians because you know. There's a word, I mean, you know, political life is supposed to be public life, and you're supposed to be um, the most in control of your emotions, you would think, in public life. And yet at the same time, the politics in our country are so quick to use those ad hominem attacks that you're talking about, and, and you know, to fame character, and just really, really get emotionally upset at each other. And angry at one another, and and uh, that that really does it, it prevents communication from happening. Any, no communication can happen because everybody's just fighting with each other, and it's on an emotional level. And you know, you're, you were talking about trying to make it so ideas are seen separate from the person, and that the idea just exists in this higher uh, objective place that. That uh, you know these ad hominem sorts of character assassin assassination don't really have any effect on, um, and I think that's really important because I mean we have this distinction between public and private life now, and and this this idea that politics that the politicians are so quick to jump into that um, emotional um, attack mode seems because I was thinking earlier that that would be more of a of something we do in a private life uh, because we're le we feel less uh, restricted among people that we're close enough with to you know honestly get angry at and uh, you know honestly feel emotional about it be intimate with whereas you know a, a politician in the public realm um, you would think would tend to be less willing to express emotions um, the only time I guess the only time they really do attack each other emotionally is when it's over uh, uh, patriotism. Always, any any anyone who comes close to being anti-American just gets jumped on immediately, and and all of a sudden, you know, regardless of what they said, nobody even pays attention to the the facts that they stated, the ideas that they gave. They just uh, defame the person as, you know, that bad word, anti-American, and then all of a sudden, nothing he says has any meaning, and, and, you know, he's making great points that if you really, you know, just did a little research and, and, and calmly, rationally tried to understand the situation that you would agree with, but you block it all out and just make this uh, emotional reaction to it. Um, you mentioned um, mushrooms were what made you think that we should get rid of politics, and uh, you know that's funny because I think that's one of the things uh, I've learned from my mushroom experiences that uh, people are very fake a lot of the time, and um, you know, being honest doesn't always mean. Uh, jumping out at people and screaming at them when you feel angry. Sometimes being honest means exactly not doing that, but still speaking your mind and trying to mediate a situation. But um, there's definitely something about the level of, of consciousness in, in individual people that um, draws them into these modes of, of behavior and uh, politicians are they seem like very divided people like you said they usually have to go home and, and get drunk because they have to experience life again they, they've been dealing with an image all day and trying to maintain the image and you know they just uh, collapse by the end of the day and um, that's really an imbalanced way of living, I think, and it's not only imbalanced for the individual, but it seems to be imbalanced for the whole uh, 
society and, and for the earth. Uh, because the way the system is working now, I mean, not just, just the politics in this country, but international politics, I mean, there's still so many undeveloped nations in the world. So much chaos out there. Um, that, you know, America is contributing to. I, I think you're from uh, Canada, probably. I'm not sure though, so let me know uh, where you're coming from. But, um, yeah, I think uh, people need to start speaking their minds, but uh, being open at the same time. And, and, uh, It'll really to, I mean, we can't get rid of politics. We can, I mean, in the sense that we still need to uh, communicate with each other on a global scale, or at least on a national scale. And without some kind of uh, a public sphere, we can't do that. And it doesn't have to be like the way politics are now, but somehow we need to be communicating and organizing and I mean, you mentioned anarchy a couple of times, and uh, I used to be into anarchy, and I mean, I definitely don't like any kind of centralized government, because it, it just, it's inherently restrictive of uh, human nature and human evolution and, and uh, individuality, and not only in community, it holds everything back, so, but at, but at the same time, um, from what I've read, I mean, very little about um, the Spanish Civil War, um, anarcho-federalists, I think, is what I'm thinking of. They were one of the three um, main parties in Spain, along with the fascists, Nazis, and the Communist Party, I think, all fighting for um, control of, of Spain, or some area within Spain. And um, I think it was, uh, I'm thinking of a George or Orwell book, uh, Homage to Catalonia, maybe, something like that. But he, uh, George Orwell was actually, like, embedded with um, with these, these people, soldiers that were in the middle of the Civil War, and he fought, uh, I think he fought on two sides, the anarchists and the communists, actually. Um, and... Uh, the way he characterized the anarchists was that they were kind of, um, uh, you know, at the beginning they were really uh, excited and, and communally uh, inspired to work together to accomplish this common goal. Um, but then when it started, when they started to realize that, oh, uh, you know, the allied powers are going to come in and, you know, there's not going to be any anarchism here. They really devolved and fell apart and separated and ended up just being totally dispersed. Um, but I don't really know what you mean by anarchism exactly. Um, I, I, I tend to be in favor of um, this idea of retribalization, which means geographically people live more naturally in small communes, I think. They can trade with other co communes, definitely, but. Um, you know, people need to live in smaller communes where the, the whole community works together towards some common goal, whatever it may be. And, you know, I, I think it should be perfectly okay for people to change their their commune and, and move around. Um, you know, you find the one that you're most comfortable in. And then, you know, obviously lots of people are different from one another. So if there needs to be, you know, a bunch of tribes mediating geographically between two tribes that really don't mixed very well, I mean, we can have a whole mediation system going on here. Um, but, but, and yet, while geographically we retribalize, um, um, information-wise, uh, the internet is, is connecting the globe, and we have a planetary culture that communicates through video and, and text on the internet. So we still remain connected on this higher global uh, communal level while still being individual units individual tribes. So let me know what you think.